Okay, good morning and welcome to today's uh, webinar. Um, in today's webinar we will, con uh, we will concentrate on the admin console, the web resource and support portal. Okay, so we'll, we'll, begin, we'll begin there now. Okay, so an introduction. Um, my name is Niall Fahey. I am the EMEA Technical Educational Specialist here at MOSI. Um, I train both our internal teams, our support agents, and external partners and customers. Just an overview of what we'll be covering today. Um, we, so MOSI Pro is designed for business users so they can manage their backups and data from the web. This webinar will cover the admin console um, and just some basic features within the admin console. Web restores um, and the web restore window and just some basic functions inside that and then we'll cover the support portal. So uh, just some definitions just in case for anybody who's not familiar with them um, in terms of the admin console. Um, the administrator um, is the person to whom the Mosey Pro account is assigned or someone designated to manage the account by the account owner. A user is someone that is assigned to manage a machine only that has been backed up by Mosey Pro. Uh, your resources are the licenses, storage quota, and the machines that are used by Mosey Pro. Um, in terms of license types, so we have two license types with uh, Mosey Pro, desktop licenses and server licenses. Desktop licenses are designed for desktop and laptop computers and just basically for, for, for mostly just backing up office documents, pictures, media files, etc. A desktop license won't install on a server operating system. A server license is designed for server operating systems, but it can also run on a desktop computer as well. And, it's made, and it's, you can use this for backing up network shares and network applications. So uh, logging into the Mosey Pro Admin Console, so to access the Mosey Pro Admin Console, you can browse to the following uh, web, web addresses. So secure.mosey.com forward slash login, mosey.com forward slash login, or moseypro.com forward slash login. And both of which will redirect you to the, the mosey, mosey.com login. Um, only an admin can access the Admin Console. Um, you, can have one, you can have more than one administrator per account. So if you wanted to create sub-administrators, they can also access through the admin console. General users won't be able to access the main uh, administration console. What can the admin console do? So the admin console has many features and is quite powerful. Some of the things you can do with it is purchase resources, create and manage groups of users and machines, create and manage administrators, transfer resources between groups and users, uh, create reports of backups usage, uh, etc., and restore users' files. And there's a few other options within there that I will cover. We'll, we'll have a browse through when we're going through the example at the end of the slide deck. What can be done within the web restore window? So the web restore function, again, has, has a few different functions. Uh, some of the the main restore features you can you can uh, perform are direct downloads of individual files or uh, groups of files, um, archive package restores, where you whereby you can you can create an archive package which will give you download links, um, or you can use DVD restores. So the support portal, um, sorry. So the support portal can be accessed by browsing to support.mosey.com and you just click the login button in the top right corner of the page. Okay, and what can you do in the support portal? The support portal allows you to open a support case, review existing cases, and obtain support ID to call support. So we'll go through a demonstration of the admin administration console now.
So for the administration console, you're coming to secure.mosey.com forward slash login. Okay, so I'm just going through uh, an example here on the admin console um, and some of the features that you can use within within that. Okay, so for this uh, example, I'm logged into my own Mosey Pro admin console. So as you can see here, it's Mosey Support Education. Okay, so from within here, you see you can search list users. This will allow you to search through your users that are, are, that are within, within your account as an, as an administrator. You can, see, you can see from here, if you click on a user, you can get information on them in terms of how much quota they have, um, when was the last time they backed up, their license key. You can get their backup history. You can also change the user's password if you wish or change their user email address or you can change their, their user group from here. Okay. In terms of search list machines, it'll do the same thing as list users, but it will search machine names. So you'll get first off, you'll get the machine name and then the user email address. And the user group will also be shown from here. And again, once you open up the machine, you, can, you, you have the, the restore history, but you've you have less options than you would do if you search this user. Okay. From here, you can also add new users. So you fill in their name, their email address that you wish to assign a key to, and then you pick um, a, the server license key or desktop license key and the required uh, quota. You can also search, you can search uh, the, the user groups. So in this example, I have just the one user group um, active. If I open that user group, I can see in here I have available keys and how much available quota I have. I have an option for default quota for new installs and also for server. You see here what users are under it, what keys I have available for this, for this uh, user group the administrators on it, and if there's any client configurations I have set up for them. You can also from here add a new user group. Here you fill out the, user, the name of the user group you wanted. If in, the, in this sense we'll put in here example. And if you want to, how much default storage you want for your server license and your desktop license. This will by doing it this way, once you select a user within a user group, they'll automatically be assigned, if you assign them a license key from that user group, they'll be automatically assigned a, a set amount. For example, if you wanted for your finance group only to have five gigabytes of desktop uh, quota, then you could, you could assign that there when you add the new user group. Therefore, going forward, every license key that's assigned from that user group for desktop will have five gigabytes. Um, in terms of admins, you can search here, you can, you can list your admins if you have if you've added additional administrators to to your your admin console. Here I don't have any sub administrators under my own, but you can add a new admin from here. And if anybody wants me to go into more detail on this I will go through it, the question and answer session at the end. Um, and that way we can just keep that way we can just keep uh, moving along. Is everybody okay with the audio? Okay, I'll just keep okay, I'll move on. Thank you. 
Okay, so as I said, if, if anybody wants me to go into further detail on the admin console or adding administrators or anything like that at the question and answer session at the end, I'll be more than happy to go through it. Here I'm just going to give you a brief look at the, each part so that we can cover the web restore window and also the, the support portal um, before the Q&A session. Okay, so here as I said you can add an admin select who the parent admin is, and what user groups you want them to control, and the roles. So roles, um, this is where all the power is given within your administration console. Um, you can give as many um, controls as you would like uh, to your sub-administrator, and you can also restrict them. So I'll just open up one here, for example. So as you can see here, I can select certain options within within this within this uh, role window to allow what to allow um, my sub admin see only the things I want them to be able to see so in here you could limit realistically you could limit a sub administrator to just being in control of one particular user group so if again for example if, if you had assigned for your your finance user group you wanted one person to look after the users within that user group, you could create a sub-administration role whereby that person would only be able to see that, that user group. And they would only be able to uh, perform certain tasks within the administration console. And all it will do is, for roles, it will literally just take out options from the left-hand pane here, options that you don't assign. So you can... Well, they, they, all it will do is just it'll shorten the menu items. Um, it's straightforward enough. Um, they are where all the power is within the admin console in the roles. Um, again, if somebody wants me to delve into them deeper or explain more, has more of a specific question on them, we can come back to it in the Q&A. In terms of client configuration, here you can create a configuration for particular user groups. Um, if you want to limit users to certain things to back up, you can create um, you can create a training or you can create a, a specific uh, cl client configuration. Once you click the create uh, client configuration, you will be brought to this window. From here, you will have options for preference uh, for preferences. You can select settings for different options within within the client selecting certain options and deselecting other ones for whichever suits suits your organization. So if you want to tie down to a, an exact limit to what people can and can't back up, you can do it within here. And again, if anybody wants has a specific question on that, we can come back and I can cover it with an example. Resources, you're able to purchase resources, you can see your bidding history from here, you can assign keys, you can transfer resources under resources. So if you want to purchase keys, you come in here, you fill out, you submit. And um, for assigning keys, you search, you, can, you, you have your keys here, you fill in your email address, so And then all you do is assign it. If you just assign it without ticking the box, the key just gets assigned, and you will have to manually give the license key and uh, to the user. If you tick the option to send send emails and click assign, it'll send that user the license key and a link to download the client. Okay. You can also transfer resources. So if you have if you've purchased a quote of a particular user group, you can select the user group and you can transfer to your, 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 your other user group if you need, rather than purchasing more quota or storage for that particular user group, you can transfer between the two. Okay, so that's some basic features on the admin console. Um, again, any specific questions um, on things within the admin console can be asked at, at the end and I can go through them for you. Okay, so just to go through the web restore window. Okay, so I'll open up my own 
betraying account here and clicking restore files. So this is our web uh, web interface as it stands now. Okay, so initially you're brought to your dashboard. From here you have profile information, so your name, your email address, what devices you have on your on your account. So if for example you have two or three machines under uh, the one email address, they will all come up on, under here. Whereas previously you would have to would have had to click on individual restore windows for each individual machine. Now you can see all the machines under the, your one email address in the one uh, restore window. So from here again, so you're seeing your devices, your download history, uh, your preferences, and any notifications you have left or you have you have received. So in terms of download history, I haven't created any restores yet, but this will give you an in-depth history of all the the restores that are created within within your your restore window. So that being uh, web re, uh, direct download, um, an archive package, DV restore, everything is recorded so that you have all, at all times you can see any um, uh, any action that's going on within your your web, re, uh, web restore window. Notifications, if there's any, anything goes wrong with your web, web restore or if you, or, or anything like that and you get any error messages, they come up here within notifications. So, and again up here, you'll also get not, you can also go to the notifications, download history, uh, pages from, from anywhere within the restore interface. Searching for files, you can select which machine you want to search. You can type in the particular file you're looking for in the particular machine and search for it that way. Um, it'll also remember uh, some recent research, uh, recent searches. So if you've if you've been searching for a particular file and you, you log out and you come back in, you click up here again, it'll save some of your recent re uh, recent searches. The emergency restore is it's basically for if your if your current laptop or computer dies and uh, you want to replace all the files you had backed up onto your new machine. An emergency restore is basically restoring all your files. So it'll open up a wizard and um, it'll tell you you've started an emergency restore and which files you want to select. So it'll give you it'll give you a warning if you don't need to restore all files backed up from the device you choose, click cancel and you and it'll give you the options you have. It warns you that way so that like it avoids it avoids you downloading all your files if you don't need all your files. If you're only looking for particular files and folders, you're better off using the other options. So if you do want to, you click yes, you select your device that you want to restore from, click next, then you can create a name um, a name for the, the restore. So we'll put, just put in here test, Hit, click next. It then asks you what date you want to restore from. So if, you're, if your laptop uh, decided that it was it was giving up the good fight on the 8th, you might want to restore from the 7th. So you can select the 7th, hit next. It asks you here, would you like to include deleted files? So deleted files is, these are files that were deselected for backup. So they were by you or they were removed from, from your machine. So say for example, I have my my resume on my desktop and it's being backed up and it's being backed up and it's being backed up every day, every day, every day. And then one day I decide, actually, do you know what? I'm going to throw that resume in the bin because it, it's an old one and I put it in the bin and it gets deleted from my machine. At that point, it's marked on our, on our, on our servers that it's not there any longer, for, it's not being selected for backup any longer. So that file then is just marked on our servers and it's kept then for 30 days before we, we then fully delete it from our servers. We do this in case it's a mistake that you deselected the file or you moved it somewhere else and it's, it wasn't selected anymore 
and this is just to make sure that any accidental deletions on your machine are not removed from our servers directly. So when it asks you here, do you want to include deleted files, it means those kind of files that you no longer are selecting for backup, but they're within the 30-day window. So you can just, if you don't need those files, you don't need to click it, but if you do, you just include deleted files, you hit next. So it, it gives you the, um, how, it asks you how you would like to receive your, your files, you select your option, hit next, and then the final step is it'll, it'll get, it'll, um, it'll tell you that it's, it's ready to download. From here, it'll then give you the option to download the Mosey Restore Manager. So this is basically works, if people are familiar to with um, Mozilla Firefox, Firefox has a built-in download manager whereby you can queue downloads. So if you if you if you're if you have a couple of files that you need to download at the same time, and you don't want to be waiting around for one to finish, so you can click on the link for the next one. You can click each link. It queues them into a system. It queues them into the, the restore manager, and it just restores the files as it goes along. And it doesn't need more any more interaction from yourself. So that's what the Mosey restore manager does. Also, you download it and install it and then you run your restore package and basically all that does is it just queues all the files that need to be restored and it, it goes through them so that you're not clicking and downloading each individual file like would, like the way you would if you had um, a Word document attached to an email email you might have sent. Okay, so you can, and if you have downloaded the restore manager previously, um, it will, it will, it will let you know, okay, we see and it does that by interacting with the cookies on your on your on your web interface. So it'll say, okay, we have downloaded the restore manager previously, we don't need to do it again. But you still have the option to. Okay. So that's the emergency restore. It's only for if you need to restore every single file on your machine. If you don't, you can come in here to your devices. You can select your machine. And go through your C drive. You can select your individual files or folders. And again, you have the option here, um, the emergency restore, and that will restore all your files. Again, if you want to, if at the moment it will show the, the latest backup. If you want to change your date, you just click there. That will change your date for you. And you can select whatever date you want to restore from. And again, the, these deleted files, which are um, on our server still, you can include them as well if you wanted to. So you can select select here your, your folder, so my word processing documents. What I can do is I can download now, so you can do a direct download, or hit more download options and I can create an archive restore or I can do a Mosey restore manager restore. Okay, so again I'm going to be brief on this um, if you want any other additional questions on it we'll, we'll cover them there in the Q&A at the end. Okay, if you want to show details of the, of the, of the folder so it'll tell me the name of the folder, it's a backup set, how many files are within it, what the size of, of, of the, the, the folder is, the device it came off of. Okay. And again, whereas previously you had separate um, backup sets, tabs, and files, file tabs, no, it's all within the, the, in the, within the PC, your, 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 your machine, your device. You can select your backup sets from here, and you can select your your, your files and folders from, from here. Okay, so that's just a quick overview of the new restore window. Um, I will move on now to the support portal um, if there's any questions at the end for the restore window just let me know. Okay, so the support portal um, is support.mosey.com. So from here, all you're doing is logging in. 
OK. Again, you want to use your administrator login. And this brings me into my support window. OK, so if, if I scroll down, so from here you can see you have the, you have the community still and you have documentation. And it looks the same as the previous window when we went to support.mosey.com. But here you can see there's an additional tab for my cases. And down here, you can see in your case management, you can also select my cases or you can submit a case. You can also chat live by just clicking on that button. And that'll take you to the, the live chat with our support agents. Or it'll also display that your, your call, the phone number that you can call for technical support. When, when you dial this number for technical support, you will be asked for your support ID. And that's given to you here. So that's your support ID. It, it will request um, from you. And that's, the, that's where you, you, you can retrieve it from. OK? If you click on My Cases, here it lists you, as you see, as this is a training account, I've never su submitted a case. But if I did, it would list the cases under here. It would give me the case number, the subject, its full name, the impacted user, and the created date. But from here I can see I have machines. If you click on your machine, it'll give you mach machine details. And this is probably this is probably the fastest way to create an, a new case for a particular machine. If you click on the machine that's affected, click on new case, and from here, what you're what you're at, you're asking, what you need to submit um, is a case reason. So you need to pick the one that most closely associates with your issue. Um, if you want, if you have a particular phone number you want to be contacted on, so for example, if it's different to the one that's that's, that's listed within within your 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 sign up, say if you have a particular IT person that's going to be dealing with this case, then you can put in the, the phone number here. The status will you don't need to change because it's a new case. Just put in the subject. So for example, I'm having uh, a restore. If, you could, if the subject is a restore issue. Your description is that you're attempting to restore and you can't pull up the restore window. So it's it's pretty self-explanatory. Um, I'm not going to stand over it. Um, it's straightforward enough. If you have any uh, log files to attach, you just click submit and, and uh, add attach, attachment. And that'll take you to the next window where you can browse the files um, and uh, that you need to add to the to the, the case. And then all you're doing is click, clicking submit and that will open a case um, within our support uh, organization here and you will be replied to. Okay. So it's straightforward enough. And again from here if you want to submit a case it's the same thing. It brings you to the same area and you can just fill in your details and so far so forth.